So now we're going to talk about the different meanings of al ismul ishara. The first meaning, now the second usage is to transform something that is unperceived or that is only known in the mind. So it's you can't so unperceived or only known in the mind to something that is perceived. And it's the figurative usage. Remember we, we showed you that example of the Jannah? Tilka al Jannah. That's something that which is unperceived. As if it was perceived and known by the description that Allah gave to us. Another example is the following. This is talking about a shaytan. إِنَّمَ ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَهُ That is only Satan who frightens you of his supporters. So here, ذَلِكُمْ a shaytan. A shaytan is something that, that is unperceived. Yet the ism shara is being used. And this is based on the description that Allah is giving of shaytan and what he does. As if we do perceive him. We perceive the ploys and the, the instruments he uses to deceive man. Here, it's يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَهُ Meaning that he uses his awliya and puts fear in the hearts. Now, one thing to note in this verse, it's saying يُخَوِّفُ So, the, the doer of the action is the huwa huwa يُخَوِّفُ And that's يُدُلْ عَلَيْهِ الشَّيْطَانِ يُخَوِّفُ actually has two مَفْعُودْ بِهِيز What's happening is actually shaitan is using his awliya or his supporters to put fear in the Muslims. يُخَوِّفُ كُمْ Here this actually is an omitted pronoun, the kum. And what is the indication of this omitted pronoun is the last part. فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ Do not fear them. So here, Allah is talking to these people who have been omitted here. فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ The hum, as you said, is the shaitan's awliya. So the reason why this pronoun has been omitted is for rhetorical reasons, which we don't want to get into at this moment. Otherwise, we'll, we'll, we'll go off the topic. So here, it's as if we perceive the shaitan and his ploys. So another example in the Quran is when it talks about to have patience and to have taqwa. And it says, ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ umur. ذَلِكَ It's talking about to have patience and to have taqwa, which are things that are known in the mind. And then he uses, and then also uses the word ذَلِكَ That's another example of this. Now, let's get to the third meaning. It's to specify the state of the indicated, whether it is close or far. So it could be closeness and farness in a number of different things. This is talking about in Jannah. وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِنُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِيَ الْأَنْهَارِ كُلَّمَا رُزِقُوا Whenever they're provided with provision of fruit therefrom, قَالُوا What do they say? هَذَا الَّذِي رُزِقْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ This is what we were provided with before. هَذَا so here, it's talking about every time they eat the fruits of Jannah. And it says, هَذَا So something that is close to them. They say that, that this is what we were provided with before. So you have the, the isim ishara for closeness. And that's physical closeness. Remember the story of Al-Baqarah? Of Nabi Adam a.s. Allah tells Adam and Hawa, وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ So هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ So you can imagine, Adam and Hawa are in Jannah. The tree is right in front of them. And Allah Subhanahu tells them, don't approach this tree. And then Shaitan came and caused them to eat from the tree. Notice in Surah Al-A'raf, where the Shajra is mentioned again. And Allah Subhanahu says, after they ate from the tree, أَلَمْ أَنْهَاكُمَا عَنْ تِلْكُمَا الشَّجَرَةِ So tilka, rather than هَذِهِ The ism ishara for distance. Once they ate from the fruit, they had to leave paradise. So when this happened, 
there was a distance between the tree and themselves. So the ismishara for distance was used. So initially it was Hadihi Shajara and here it's Tilkuma. The ismishara are changed based on the context. <laughs>